good morning folks and uh, an official welcome to the SA175 Popeye Cruise. Thank you very much, you can stay. <laughs> I thought I'd ask you to start with a quiz. To whom do we owe the pleasure of this cruise tonight? I mean in the geographical sense. Now I'm going to give you four choices. Is it God, Colonel William Lyon, George Kingston or Edwin Smith? Okay, who's voting for God? <laughs> Put up your hand. You're a Catholic, Keneally. Put your hand up. <laughs> Edwin Smith, the mayor decided what? Wouldn't it be nice if instead of in the middle of summer we had just a series of rather rotting, smelly water holes in the middle of our city, we'd have a lake. So we got a lake, and this is it. And we're, headed, we're headed towards the weir, which he developed. Before we get there, over on this side, it used to be totally parkland under Colonel William Light's plan, but the railways came along in the 1860s. The first one went to Port Adelaide, and so they've expanded. And now, of course, we're going to expand back on them, but not with Parkland, but with a Royal Adelaide Hospital. That's the site you're looking at out on the port side. In the 1930s, just along here, there were a whole series of humpings. What were they there for? Why were they there? Depression. No, depression. Yeah, it was the depression. And here and further upstream, there were just whole camps of people who had nowhere else to live couldn't rent anywhere and so there were a series of sort of cottage stroke humpies along here made out of anything they could find and they survived from late 1920s right up to 1938 before they finally got the last one. Three weirs there have been. The first one was built in the 1860s and it was built with, it was a wooden weir. They got some help from the people over the railway line in the jail and it lasted how long you reckon? first weird. How many? Four, four months. You've been listening to the radio this morning. You can, you can read my mind. Four months it lasted because it was built the beginning of winter. Uh, in fact, by about June it was up. And by October, when you get the big floods coming down, boom, completely gone. The second weir was the one that Edwin Smith conceived of. He, he scrapped of this weir and so in 1881, so it is in fact a birthday year for the weir and the lake, he develops a weir here. It doesn't look like this one. It doesn't have the big uh, gates that can be lifted up, the sluice gates. Uh, it, it, it's actually got pipes down the bottom that could be opened. And so it survived until it too, under real pressure from floods, never got blown away, but it was just, uh, it was causing another problem. So this weir is actually the 1929 version, and it, with some variations over the years, it's still essentially the same weir. But there's about, how many metres of water here, David? Seven. Seven metres of water. That's so quite deep. Just over here, tucked in underneath the, uh, the restaurant, you see the couple of gondolas? Yeah, they still use it. They, they, I, I, saw, I was riding my treadley around here the other night, and sure enough, the, the, gond, the gondolier was bringing a couple downstream, presumably for a lovely year. There were public hangings outside the Adelaide Jail until the 1850s. It's, a, it's just remarkable to think of it. The first public hanging was actually out, probably out here somewhere, certainly on this side of the river. And a, a fellow called Edward McGee had shot at, the, at, a, at a constable uh, fortunately, didn't didn't, sh didn't kill him, but it shot at him uh, after a bundle of burglary. So they hanged him. The only trouble was Jim, the hangman, wasn't very good at it. So the cart was let go, and he was left dangling there, yelling at the top of his voice. And about 500 people have gathered for this public hanging, and there they've started yelling as well. They're yelling murder, which is a bit funny thing to say if you're going to hang somebody, but. Um, Jim the hangman had to come back and grab him by the legs until he stopped. I just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, is it called Pinky Flat? Two theories. One is that it was uh, a site um, where a lot of, originally you would have seen a lot of the little uh, bilbies with the long pink ears, you know, the Easter bilby now we talk about, long pinkies, they used to call them pinkies. Or alternatively, people would have picnics over there when it was all just pretty scrubby and they drink pinky, cheap wine. Now when they beautified this, only in the 1950s actually did they get around to beautifying the area, and the city council thought that Pinky Flat was altogether too rough a name for it. 
but other people said, you can't change the name of that, it's Pinky Fat. So it stayed as Pinky Fat. That's where the Queen Mum had her garden party back in the 1960s, and of course I know many of you were there. <laughs> <laughs> My invitation got lost in the mail, obviously. But we're now going under the quite beautiful city bridge, which also has a birthday this year, 1931. This, the third bridge here, was actually put into place. It's a concrete structure. It's actually had a real internal treatment back about 10 years ago because of problems with concrete disease. Uh, they had to do a lot of reinforcing in underneath here. You can see that it's got these, if you haven't done it closely, apart from this big sweeping arch here, there, there, are, there are two what are called bowstring arches to take the foot traffic on either side, the foot and the treadleys. The Torrens Linear Park allows you, by the way, to, to ride or walk, if you want to, 20 k's from Athelston in the hills all the way down to the sea without crossing a road. You don't, you go under bridges all the way. And then it means if you wanted to, you could do a 40 k circuit and you wouldn't cross a road. It's one of our most valuable recreational tracks. This is a beautiful bridge that was completed in 1937 and it went with the idea goes right back to the 1920s when a, a railway engineer designed it but then the uh, unfortunately the, the depression came along so it took until 1937 to build it it's the first welded steel bridge in south australia and it's a it, i don't know if you've walked across it but it gets a bit of a bounce up it's actually quite springy folks, but we're going to go up and uh, have a cup of tea and a scone or something and a cake. It's like a TARDIS, isn't it? <laughs> 2001. And uh, so we're just going to go up there and please hang around and we'll, you know, we'll get, we'll start the workshop on your memories of the Popeye. Well, the ones that you're allowed to tell, anyway.